Hi, Claude Whitaker here. I'm a speaker, a sales trainer. I give speeches and, and talks to groups of salespeople across the country and groups of business owners. And I read a lot of books on selling. I have a vast library of sales books and marketing books, books on how the mind works, books on why people buy, buyer behavior, um, how the brain works, things like that. Okay, they're all in that, in that genre. Well, I'm, I want to talk a little bit about uh, today about the book Go For No. Now, this book was written by Richard F Fenton, I keep wanting to say Felton, it's Fenton, and Andrea Waltz. Richard Fenton and Andrea Waltz, Go For No. All right? It's a very short book, a very quick read. It's one of the top books on Amazon uh, in this niche. Uh, now, this is written mostly for network marketers, multi-level marketers. It really is for those guys. But if you're in direct selling of any, any kind, you're going to get something out of this book. Now, in chapter 23 of uh, this short book, it says uh, there's an example of one of the authors was talking to a, a company. It was an insurance company, and they were just dying. This insurance company uh, and the agency that, that was working for the company just weren't making any money. They weren't making, making any sales. Of course, they had all the excuses. Uh, the reps, the sales reps were talking about how hard they were working and everything, and they really they weren't working hard at all. So they started a new program, and this is the program. They hired, they had the reps go around and talk to people and say, and call people on the phone and say, you don't want to buy life insurance, do you? That's all they asked. Well, the vast majority of people said, yeah, you're right, I don't want to buy life insurance. But about one out of, I don't remember exactly the statistic, I think it was one out of 60, said, well, maybe. Why don't you come over? I'm thinking about buying life insurance. I've been waiting for somebody to call. Yeah, come on over. I might just buy insurance from you. Now you're thinking, maybe you're thinking this, you're thinking one out of 60. That's terrible. I'm gonna to talk to 59 people to get to the one out of 60, but you know what? You can talk to 60 people on the phone quickly in just a few hours. And what does that get you? One person that really wants to buy what you're selling, okay? In fact, I'm going to tell you something from my own experience. In your town right now, if you are prospecting and cold calling, just remember this. In your town, no matter what the size of the town is right now, there are between 10 and probably 10 and 100 people that right now, today, want to buy what you have. They're looking for you. They just don't know who you are. Okay? Your job when you're cold calling is to find those people. Find the people that are ready to buy. Okay? Now, in my own experience, you know, the life insurance, I, I read that example about the insurance. And I thought about this, and this is a long time ago. Now, I'm 62 years old now. I was probably 24 years old at the time. I was in a sales contest. I was selling vacuum cleaners. Uh, and I was in a sales contest. And I was selling vacuum cleaners door to door. I remember a lot of specifics about this. And it, it's in one of my books. And it's a good story. And I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, it was the last day of the month. I don't remember if it was the 30th, the 31st, or whatever it was, but it was the last day of the month. I was in a sales contest. I remember this. I had 15 sales that month and 39 presentations. 15 sales, 39 presentations. All right? Well, there were two contests going on. One was if you hit 40 presentations, you got a bonus. I don't remember what the bonus was, but I remember it was worth doing. And if I hit 16 sales, I got a huge bonus, a monetary bonus. Now, at the time, I wasn't bright enough to realize this. The bonus was actually more than the retail cost of that one vacuum cleaner. Had I had my brains about me, I simply would have bought the vacuum cleaner myself or sold it to my brother or something like that and then got the bonus and then got the vacuum cleaner for free. I just would have done that. But I wasn't smart enough back then. So what I did was this. I knew I had to make a sale. Okay? It was the last day of the month. I had to make a sale. Not a presentation. A sale. And when you're selling door-to-door -door vacuum cleaners, uh, if you want to get people in their home, especially you know, 30 years ago, you want to get people in their home, or 40 years ago when you want to get people at home, uh, most people work during the day. It was, I was working in a, an industrial town. Most people work during the day for shifts. So they were home in the evening. So I started around 5, 5.30 or something like that. And I'm going door-to-door. Now, I need a sale. I don't need a presentation. I need a sale. I'm probably not going to have time for two presentations, just one. I need the sale. The problem is this. It was a thunderstorm was coming into town. I could see it. I could see the clouds. I remember this, and I'm looking at the clouds. I didn't see lightning yet, but I'm seeing these clouds coming into town. I'm thinking, I got an hour. 
you know, I got an hour before this thunderstorm is hitting and I'm going out in the rain, knocking on doors, nobody's gonna let me in and I'm not gonna be able to do it and I'm gonna lose my contest. So I knew I had to make a sale. So what did I do? I threw away everything I knew about an approach, how to talk to people, how to be uh, tactful, how to be enthusiastic, how to be all of those things. I completely threw all that away and I ran from door to door, okay? I remember the streets I was on, these were houses, they were small houses, they were close together, but they were houses. And I would run up to the door and I'd say, hi, I sell Kirby vacuum cleaners, is what I was selling at the time. I sell Kirby vacuum cleaners, I need a sale. <laughs> I didn't say I would like to show you a I said, I need a sale. Okay, and I will give you this set of cutlery or whatever the gift was if you'll take a look at it with the understanding that when I'm done, I'm in a sales contest and I have to have a sale. Okay, that means if you like it, will you buy it from me today if you like it because I need a sale because I'm in a contest. I'm telling you that right up front. That's what I got to do. Now, this is what happened. Of course, of course, they said no, 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 no. The amazing thing is this, it really, I remember, it didn't take me that many people, I, maybe 12, maybe 10 or something like that. Before I knocked on the door, the guy came to the door, I remember the guy, okay? And wherever you are, mister, I thank you. Because I remember the guy, I knocked on the door and he comes to the door and I said, look, I'm from the Kirby company, we sell vacuum cleaners. He goes, okay. And I said, it's an expensive vacuum cleaner and I need a sale. And I'm in a contest, it's the last day of the month, the storm is coming in, I need a presentation, but I have to ask you, if I show you the vacuum cleaner and give you the gift for your time, would you be able to say yes right now while, we're, while I'm in the home because I need a sale tonight because I'm in a contest. This is not a thing you can think about and call me later. I need a sale tonight, is that okay? And he said the magic words, he goes, well, we were thinking about getting a new vacuum cleaner. I've heard Kirby's a pretty good vacuum cleaner. Yeah, come on in, I, we'll, we can probably do business. Oh, thank you. And of course, I went in, the storm hit, <laughs> thank goodness the electricity didn't go off, I did my presentation, and of course they bought. Now, what did I learn from that? There are people that want to buy, see? No is okay. Now, I read this book and one of the things that just hit me was, I remember that instance when I went through that, that go, knocking on doors, just, just quickly, quickly, quickly going to the, I wanted to find that person that was going to say yes. Not thinking about the people that said no. I didn't go to one door and then, and then they said no and I go, oh, now I'm depressed. Now I can't do this. Oh, I've, I've got to go home and lick my wounds. I didn't think anything like that. I'm, I'm thinking next. I've got to go to the next door because I, all I care about is I've got to get in a home, show my vacuum cleaner and make a sale. That's all I care about. I just have to do that. It's okay if they say no. It's not okay if everybody says no, but it's okay if they say no. All right? That doesn't affect me personally. They don't mean no to me. They just mean no, I don't want to do this. All right, well those examples and more, that's my example, but the similar examples and more are in the book, Go For No. And I understand now why it's one of the number one books on uh, selling for network marketers on Amazon today. Go buy it, thank you.